Welcome to the Arizona Technology Council's Tech Focus Member Spotlight. The Tech Focus Member Spotlight podcast highlights Arizona's growing prominence as a world-class tech hub. Each podcast episode features innovative entrepreneurs, transformative leaders, tech disruptors, and change agents who are reshaping the state's evolving tech ecosystem in existing and emerging sectors. Please join your host, Eric Miller, as we get to know another interesting member of your tech community. Welcome to Arizona Technology Council's Tech Focus Member Spotlight, the council's podcast highlighting the innovators, entrepreneurs, and tech leaders shaping Arizona's thriving technology ecosystem. I'm Eric Miller, principal and co-owner of PADT Inc. And today I'm sitting down with Rick Hikson of Shea2. Founded in 2000, Shea2 delivers digital transformation, AI, and software solutions globally. Serving startups, SMBs, and Fortune 5000 companies, its expert teams offer tailored services across the tech ecosystem. They're headquartered in Florida with 12 offices or offices around the globe. And Shea2 provides a one-stop shop model across software technology spectrums. This is the company. And let's talk a little bit about the man. Rick Hikeson leads data management at Shea2. Guiding, uh, he guides strategic initiatives that help organizations maximize the value of their data. With over 12 years in IT and a background in sales leadership, he builds scalable practices using modern platforms, AI, and agentic technologies. Rick specializes in data governance, integration, and architecture, transforming fragmented data into trusted assets. His collaborative approach drives platform adoption, expands key accounts, and accelerates digital transformation. Passionate about data's business impact, Rick focuses on go-to-market strategies, customer success, and strategic partnerships to unlock actionable insights. These are all very important things and uh, been around a little while. I know what it looks like when those things don't work. (laughs) So it's good to see that someone's working on it. So um, let's just kind of dig in here and we'll, we'll start off with just a little bit about you. You know, what's your origin story? You know, how did you end up doing what you do today? Yeah, very good. Thank you, Eric. Uh, appreciate the time. Um, so uh, I actually started on the sales and business development side, but what really hooked me wasn't just selling technology. It was seeing how data could transform businesses. Um, and if I look back, there was a, a real turning point. So I started to notice that when companies were able to harness their data, the conversations weren't just about closing a deal. They were about driving measurable outcomes. So that that fascinated me. Um, so I'd walk out of meetings thinking, wow, this isn't just software, it, it's strategy. So over time, collaborating with partners like Snowflake, Databricks, Datadog, Salesforce, um, I kept running into the same challenge. And that was companies had tons of data, uh, but struggled to use it. And, mm-hmm. you know, once you've seen that pattern repeated across industry, it, it makes you want to solve it. Um, and so that's really what motivated me to build and lead Shetu's data management practice. Uh, it's helping organizations turn data chaos into that data clarity. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the And that's the real growth engine in, in business. That's, that's, that's exciting and kind of in the middle of uh, what a trend in industry. I mean, um, yeah, that was, uh, it's amazing how much data we have now. And and uh, at the same time, sometimes how hard it is to get to. <laughs> so we'll talk more about that. But before we sure. dig into that, and talk a little bit more about those topics and the company itself. One of the things we like to ask is a little bit about you. And so what is your favorite movie and why? Wow. Um, good questions. That's fun. Um, (laughs) I I like these types of questions. Um, uh, so my favorite movie and why, um, I, I'm going to have to go with Lord of the Rings. Um, it's not just, um, you know, it's not just uh, epic battles, um, right? Uh, for me, it's the teamwork and the resilience, right? You can't help but see the parallels you know, to leading projects. Uh, you need a fellowship, you need trust, and everyone has a, a role to play. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot. There's, it's it's a, such a well-written uh, story. And as a lifelong fan of the book, I was terrified when the movies came out that they wouldn't. Oh, they did. They did so well with the movies. They are amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I'm. I'm the same way, right? If if it's a, a good book, 
I rarely see the movie, but that one changed my mind yeah. for sure. Yeah, I'm it was a, it was amazing, brilliant, I brilliant. Agree. But I want to talk more about Lord of the Rings, but let's talk more about G two. Okay. <laughs> so, in general terms, you know, what is it that the company does? What do you what, do you, what services and and solutions do you guys provide? Sure. Um, so Shea2 is a forward-thinking managed services and solutions provider. Mm -hmm. uh, we work across many industries. Uh, we focus on digital transformation, artificial intelligence, software solutions. Uh, in my practice, we focus on data, right? So helping right. companies clean it, govern it, unify it, uh, and actually put it to work so that they can make smart decisions and, and they can grow. Um, by focusing on data, we produce AI and agentic AI solutions that work, right? Um, one of the things we really emphasize is that data management isn't just one and done uh, mm -hmm. exercise. It's a living system. So when I explain what we do, you know, I tell clients, hey, imagine you've got a messy garage. You can keep piling things up or you can build shelves, label everything and actually find what you need. Uh, that's what we do with data, right? So we help organizations establish trusted, you know, compliant and uh, business ready data by implementing frameworks uh, for data quality, governance, stewardship. Um, mm -hmm. you know, we ensure that data is accurate, secure, actionable across the enterprise. And I mean, simply we turn messy, risky data into a strategic asset. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a, to, you know, to caveat on that, I mentioned earlier, our strategic partners with Snowflake, Databricks, Datadog, Esri, many more, um, you know, Shea2 has software developers who have expertise in their ecosystems, right? Which enable us to help companies in many different industries, including healthcare, supply chain, real estate, energy. Um, the short version. Yeah, it's really important. And, and you know, I think there's some some key uh, points in there that, that really talk about it's it's not just I need my data. It's it's it has to it, it, I like the fact that you treat it as this long term commitment to keeping it up to date and accessible and everything. But it is a crowded, there are a lot of people that claim to work in this space, right? But so what makes Shea 2 special when compared to those other companies that say they do this stuff? Sure, that's a great question, Eric. Um, so if you look at it from this angle, right? We're not just developers, we're problem mm -hmm. solvers. Um, we bring deep industry knowledge. Um, we work hand in hand with partners. I've mentioned already several. Um, that ecosystem um, approach sets us apart. Uh, mm -hmm. It also means that when a client comes to us, and they're not getting a, a one tool thinking, right? Yeah. Um, they're getting an integrated mindset. You know, how do we connect the dots across technologies so the business problem actually gets solved? Um, we're also, you know, of course, we're, we're proud that five major analysts, research firms, you know, Omdia, ISG, Everest Group, uh, Verdantix, and AIM Research, um, in the past year have recognized our uh, artificial intelligence and data analysis expertise, cloud expertise, and other mm -hmm. services. Um, we've also received six Golden Globe, uh, Gold Globies, if you will, uh -huh. uh, for, tech <laughs> for technology achievement, 12 Stevie Awards, um, uh, competitions for American Business and International Business Awards, CRN, uh, major channel you know, publication, had listed us like 14, 15 times. Um, including Tech Elite 250, MSP 500, and Solution Provider 500. Uh, toot our own horn a little bit there, but That's uh, recogni recognition is great. Uh, but for me, it, it just validates that our team is on the right mm -hmm. path. It keeps mm -hmm. us hungry uh, to do even better for our, our clientele. It's a good point. I mean, it's it's uh, you know these industry recognitions are are not handed out like candy, no. um, and uh, and you, they do they do check. <laughs> so it's good to. It's yeah. No. Yeah. It's 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 important. Um. So, you know, you you've been in this role a little while. What what's your favorite thing about what you do every day? Wow. Where do I start? Um. A good question. Honestly, I I think I think it's the mix, right? Mm -hmm. Um. I get to think big on strategy. Um. Then I get to roll my sleeves up with the team and and my partners to make it real, right? Mm -hmm. Um. That balance keeps me uh, energized. Uh, and honestly, no two days are the same. So, you know, one Love day that. I'm talking to executives about vision. Uh, mm -hmm. The next I'm in the weeds with the engineers on a tricky integration. Right? The, the variety is exciting. to me. Yeah, yeah, that's exciting. Um, and you kind of covered this, but kind of the same question, but for the company itself, like 
Like if we if we met at one of these networking events for the tech council, which we often do, and I asked you, you know, what's a favorite one favorite thing that your company does? Like you can tell me one thing that's your favorite product service activity. One thing. I mean, I'm biased, mm -hmm. um, so I, I love seeing data go from a headache to a growth mm -hmm. engine. Yeah. Um, whether yeah. it's you know a hospital cutting errors uh, or supply chain running smoother, I mean, it's rewarding to know we played a role. Um, especially when a, a client tells us, you know, hey, you saved us weeks of work or, or we finally trust our data. That's the win, right? Um, it's those little moments of, it, of impact uh, that keep me motivated. Yeah. No, I love that. Love that. Um, I want to talk about leadership a little bit, but something that we, we hadn't talked about before that popped in my head while you're talking and um, riff a little bit on this is, you do agentic AI, you do AI in general. This is new, right? We, we we mentioned it like, oh yeah, we do that. But I mean, nobody was doing it. Very few people were doing it five years ago, right? right. So, so, I mean, how is that looking? Are you having success with it? What, what Just kind of riff a little bit on where you think we are with AI for, for solving these data problems and where we can go. Yeah, I mean, where do we, again, where do we start with, with AI, right? Yeah. Um, it, yeah. It's everywhere. It's everywhere yeah. right now. Um, yeah. We can't get away from it, right? And, right. You know, it, and it makes sense, right? Um, it. But here's the thing: AI is everywhere, but it's only as good as the data that's behind it. Mm. Um, you know, uh, helping these companies get their data house in order uh, so AI actually works. Mm -hmm. That's what excites me, right? I, I have um, clientele that say, "Hey, Rick, I want to create an AI agent or a model or a piece of software." And a lot of times they have a misconception and think it's a flip of the switch and I've got AI. That's not the case, mm -hmm. right? Uh, it needs to be trained. It needs to be cleansed. It needs to be organized um, and all these things, right? Getting their data house in order. Um, so I think that's really it, right? It, it, you know, it feels like we're at the beginning of a new era mm -hmm. where AI is going to touch every industry and to be a part of laying that foundation. So, again, it's pretty exciting to me. Pretty exciting, yeah. So, so that's a, that's a really good point. So it's 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 you, you it is garbage in, garbage out, as as we all learned in yeah. in in the early days of computing, and it's still true. It's just a lot more garbage sometimes with a lot of data. <laughs> but True yeah, text. so getting your data house in order, that's a good that's a good term for it. And uh, then applying the AI on top of it. And so that's good. Good you guys are leading the charge on that. Yeah. So um you've been a leader for for teams. Um I think they're global teams. Is that a valid statement? Yes, correct. Yeah. So so what have you learned about leadership? And uh, dig in a little bit, dig it deeper into that. I've talked with a couple of folks recently on this podcast that that are working with global teams. So the second part of that question is, you know, how, what do you what's your advice for not just leadership in general, but leading a global team, which can be a little bit different? Yeah, I mean, the difference really, I mean, the, the same is that um, it's it's people, right? It's mm -hmm. humans, right? Um, you know, leadership isn't always about having the, all the answers. Mm -hmm. um, it's about setting a clear vision. Um, it's about empowering your team, giving them space to succeed. Um, if it's one thing I've learned, and that is if you micromanage, you limit innovation. Mm -hmm. um, but if you give people room and breathing room, they surprise you with the solutions that you may never have thought about, you know, uh, for yourself. Uh, so with uh, a multicultural team, um, mm -hmm. it, it's just, you know, it's having those conversations. It's being on a personal level and it's, you know, that's the leadership uh, for me is have the conversation, right? Don't micromanage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a good point. And, and the technology enables that a little bit more from a global standpoint um, than, it, than it did in the past, right? So sure. um, it's really making it much, much easier. That's good. That's cool. Um, you know, we we never really have enough time. Um, well, I, I want to add one more question, then I'll get to the final question. Sure. Um, what do you? What do you? And maybe the answer to this is AI. But in your industry, what do you think is going to happen next? That's big when it comes to using not just controlling data, but using it effectively. Yeah. So I mean, that's. That, that's some of the biggest challenges we face, right, as, mm -hmm. as uh, enterprise and, and uh, business owners and, and leaders. And that is, uh, in my case, again, right, it's the sheer complexity of data. Mm -hmm. um, companies are struggling. Um, they're juggling cloud, AI, compliance all at once. Um, yeah. and, and I think the hardest part isn't the technology. 
uh, in itself. It's it's getting people, processes, mm -hmm. and platforms aligned. Okay. Um, you know, I often do say that you know technology moves fast, but organizations move slowly. Uh, so bringing in you know that gap is is really the real challenge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a good point, and it's accelerating. It seems like it's it's not, not only are we dealing with multiple things, but it's going faster. <laughs> so um, yeah, yeah, it's true. So true. Okay, so we never have enough time for these uh, interviews. I snuck in a couple extra questions anyway, but uh, sure. to finish up, um, what didn't I ask you that you wished we would have talked about here today? What didn't you ask me? Um, I, I'd say maybe partnerships. Um, mm. Mm. You know, in data, nobody wins alone. Um, our, our partnerships with with platforms, with customers, that's the real multiplier in this space. Um, you know, at Shea2, we've got more than 30 strategic partnerships with, you know, iconic and leading tech companies. I, I mentioned a few already, Salesforce, Oracle, NetSuite, IBM, Databricks, um, Snowflake. I can go on and on, but it, it's not just the logos on the slide. Mm -hmm. um, it's the actual collaboration, the co-innovation, um, and the learning, you know, from each other. Um, that's what allows us to deliver to value to our clients. Mm -hmm. So a couple of good ca catchphrases I'm taking from this. Uh, one is get your data house in order. Um, and then um, the second one is I love that idea that no one in data, no one wins alone. Um, that's that's a really, yeah, wow, that's true in so many different levels. <laughs> um, it is. Um, yeah. So. Um, and I, you can't have AI without data. Yeah, you really can't, right? Yeah. Um, you it's, awesome. it's, it's so, so true. Um, so I think that is pretty much it. I want to wrap up by also thanking you and Shay too, for being a platinum annual sponsor for the tech council. Um, it, it really does make a difference to a lot of things. It helps us, uh, you know, deliver greater value to the whole community. And, uh, we we really do appreciate uh, that you guys stepped up on that, and 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 it really does make it makes a huge difference for for everybody that's a member of the tech council. So I wanted to personally, and on behalf of Steve and the rest of the council, thank you for that. So very, very welcome. Yeah, well, good. it's going to be been a great chat. I, I, I like. I, if I come away with a couple of good catchphrases that I will steal, I will tell you. Um, okay. I really appreciate it. It's really good. So Thanks. that's a wrap. Thanks, Eric. Yeah, thank you. That's a wrap on this episode of Tech Focus Member Spotlight. A big thank you to Rick for sharing his expertise with us today. We'll have his contact information in the show notes for those who want to reach out. If you enjoyed this conversation, be sure to subscribe and check out more episodes featuring Arizona's top tech leaders. Arizona TechCast was brought to you by PADT. PADT is the Southwest leading provider of engineering products and services to companies that design or manufacture physical products. Our team of 85 engineers, sales professionals, administrators, and technicians is proud to be an ANSYS Elite channel partner, selling and supporting the world's leading multi-physics simulation platform. We are also a Stratasys partner for 3D printing systems and provide product design, simulation, and 3D printing as a service. So for over 30 years now at PADT, we make innovation work. So if you're interested in being a podcast participant or sponsor for Tech Focus, contact marketing at aztechcouncil.org to learn more about opportunities to further position you as a tech expert, influencer, and innovator. And to learn more about the Arizona Technology Council and how we're driving innovation across the state, visit aztechcouncil.org. So until next time, I'm Eric Miller, and thank you for joining us for Tech Focus. Thank you for joining us for this episode of the Arizona Technology Council's Tech Focus Member Spotlight. If you know of someone we should get to know better, email marketing at aztechcouncil.org. Let's work together to accelerate Arizona's global impact.